Now my original plan was to not review this series weekly, but coming out of episode 1, I realized I just have so much to say about the first episode and I know I'm going to have so much to say, we're definitely going to be tackling this weekly. This is one of the rare cases where I've actually experienced a little bit of the source material, so I actually had knowledge of what would happen in this episode, and I have a bit of knowledge of what will happen in episode 2, but past that, I'm pretty much anime original. I think I read about 8 chapters of the manga version of this series. Now, there it's originally a light novel, but of course it got a manga counterpart, and that's what I experienced, because the description to the series and the preview in the poster image it looks generic, it honestly does. Past the visuals, of course the visuals look great, but it felt like this would be a generic rom-com. And within one chapter of that manga, I was hooked immediately. I've experienced so many anime that I can almost always pinpoint how the cliches will pop up, how the story will function. This series immediately broke those trends. This is a series that follows a world that essentially has this mysterious thing called as puberty syndrome. And people going through puberty can experience these weird phenomenal things that can range maybe from a good aspect to your life, but most likely it's going to be something horrible. The poster image girl you'll see, Mai, who is the bunny girl, can't be seen by others more often than not. The more she sticks out, the less she is noticed. So she eventually kind of uses that to her advantage, so she'll wear a bunny girl suit, to really make it so she can just do things and go places without people noticing her. But obviously, that's not going to always be happy-go-lucky fun times, and by the end of the episode, people are actually forgetting about her, not even just they can't see her, totally forgetting her, besides our main character. Now this premise, that is amazing. That immediately makes you say, okay, this actually sounds like it'll do something a little different, especially if you're going to use puberty syndrome, which may sound a little stupid at first, but when you think about it, most rom-coms are set in high school, and the fact that this is going to be a teen romantic comedy, having kids going through puberty, and having puberty be even more scary and frightening by possibly experiencing a mystical element, maybe being forgotten, maybe not being able to be seen, maybe be physically hurt because someone cyberbullied you online, that makes puberty and a growing up story so much more engaging because now you did make it a bit more supernatural, but you still kept it relatively human, making this a completely fresh take. But I think the thing that just completely sells this anime is the main character. This guy, if he wasn't like this, if he wasn't as cool, calm, and collected as he was, I don't think I would be as excited for this series as I am. Most of the cliche scenes that I was anticipating are actually in this episode, but the reason I like those scenes is how he responds to them. Almost immediately, you get the little sister in the bed scene, he wakes up, and you're like, okay, it's another anime trying to force the incest-brother-sister relationship, and immediately he shuts it down, and you're like, okay... This isn't a guy who wants to bang his little sister. And then over the course of the episode, you realize, oh, this sister isn't attracted to her brother. And the reason she was sleeping in his bed is because she is afraid to be alone. She doesn't go to school. She doesn't watch TV. She is so isolated because back when she was still in school, she got cyberbullied and just looking at her brother, she got these cuts and physical wounds on her because people were harassing her online. And that's the puberty syndrome that she experienced. You're like, okay, you're starting to see, like, okay, the cliches that you're expecting, they're here, but they're actually kind of making fun of them in a lot of ways while you have this character who keeps shutting them down. Like, he's not a completely oblivious to things. He obviously is attracted to females. Like, there's multiple points in the episode where he obviously is like, hey, my, I'm glad you're stepping on my foot. I like that and all, but we're trying to have a conversation here. Can we focus back on this and then maybe we'll focus on this other thing later? He obviously has an attraction to the girl, but, like, that's not his main drive. It's more like, I'm I'm so curious why people can't see this girl, but also I want to help her because clearly she's in need of help. He's an outcast himself, and I like that because he can actually observe things and understand the atmosphere and why people are like this. There's a rumor going around that he beat up three guys, he got these dangerous wounds on his chest, and once a rumor's out there, no matter how false of a rumor it is, it's going to stick, and that's why he can't fix this. That's why he's a loner. It's why he only has two friends, but two friends is good enough for him. He's a very respectable character because how he engages with these cliche scenes. The little sister walks in with Mai and himself in his room. He's shirtless because he was showing her the scars, and she reacts like, oh, you hired a call girl. I would have never come in. And he's just like, you got the wrong idea, it's cool, she's just a classmate. It's such a great scene because it keeps making you think, here comes the cliche scene. They gotta slip in at least, at least one that's pure cliche, and they break it down, almost like they're trying to make fun of the series who just do the cliche scene and nothing else. The two characters, our main character as well as Mai, they're fantastic. I would be fine if just one of them was fantastic, but they both are. Mai has such a tragic, popular, famous person life, 
that essentially got screwed over and she can no longer be seen by people or very few people except our main character now. You have a main character who is essentially so isolated but not really hateful to the world, he's just trying to live his life and he just responds in such human ways. He's one of the most natural rom-com protagonists I have seen in so, so long. Many people call this Monogatari light meet snafu, and honestly that's not a bad comparison. The supernatural elements feel very monogatari esque and the way the characters kind of interact with one another with the medium-sized cast that we're clearly going to get, that's very snafu based as well. The presentation is fantastic, the eyes are absolutely gorgeous, detail to the animation is spot on, background art was also really well done, voice work absolutely top notch. I had high hopes going into this after what I read with the manga. This episode delivered, I think this will be one of the best anime of the season, it's going to be 13 episodes, people are saying that should cover about 5 of the light novels. That sounds like proper pace in my honest opinion, this is something that no one should sleep on. I think the character interaction is unique, it's original, there's actually substance to this writing, the author is known for his good works. This is amazing, this was a brilliant first episode and what a way for me to kick off this new season of anime. A season that I've been so anticipating, we will definitely keep covering videos on this in the future here, so look forward to episodes to review next week. Let me know whatever you're feeling of the series down in that comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content from me in the future. But until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.